folks to recognize this afternoon. Before we get started into the program, a few housekeeping matters. I apologize for the lateness of the water, soft drinks, name tags, and other things. They are on their way and should be here momentarily. We've got tripping hazard galore. So please watch your step. There are cables that are strung hither and yon, particularly in the historic carriage house. And what year was that carriage house built, Paul Silverman? It was something like 1869, and George Pardee's original buggy can be seen there in the corner. So, my name is Amelia Marshall. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Oakland Heritage Alliance, I'd like to introduce some of the great people who are volunteering for our organization. Let's start with our wonderful president, Mary Harper, there at the sign-in table. And a special shout out to Mary Harper because she has led us through the past two years of COVID pandemic and transitioned us from lectures in an in-person context to free online Zoom lectures, which have been enormously popular. Glad to have done that. And looking around the room, we have past president Naomi Schiff, the queen of preservation action. We've got past president Tom Devley. We've got Charles Cooper. We've got Catherine News, also at the sign-in table. Who else have we got? We've got Tom Haw and Tamara Nicola Haw. There she is, videographing. And I know I missed a person or two here. There's so many of you wonderful volunteers. Well, Annalie is here, the guest of honor for a wonderful time. And we've got past Vice President Neil Hayden swinging chairs around, and Neil will be our timekeeper. And when some of us get too talkative, he will set, send the signal. What's the signal, Neil? I have a bell. He, uh, he has a bell. Okay, when I get too talkative, you better ring that bell. Okay, now in past years, how many people here have attended a PIP in person before? Raise your hand. And the usual way we do it is a lecture format with a screen and PowerPoint slides. But because we are taking advantage of this fine outdoor setting and all this fresh air, we have in the carriage house the PowerPoint running in a loop so you can watch this 14 minute loop and see pictures of the wonderful projects and individuals who are being recognized here tonight. And also there in the corner is my wonderful husband, Bill Imler, who is going to be pouring wine as soon as the glasses are transported in for everyone's enjoyment. So without any further ado, do we have Kevin Tam here? Kevin Tam here? There he is. Come forward, Kevin Tam. We really appreciate all of our supporters and donors, but Kevin has gone beyond the scope of what most of us can manage. He's a finance expert with PG&E and is interested in local history. PG&E is in the process of moving from the uh, headquarters in San Francisco to the Kaiser Building there on Lake Merritt at the site of the original Convent of the Sacred Heart and Holy Names College. So Kevin started up a program to raise funds for Oakland Heritage Alliance using the PG&E employee peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform. And so let's let's uh, give Kevin a big thanks and let him say a few words. Thanks so much, Amelia. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time to introduce myself. First of all, I want to apologize for, for being underdressed here. I was so anxious to um, show off my shirt of 
this mid-century architectural gem known as the Kaiser Center that uh, I thought I'd, I'd wear my shirt today. But as uh, Amelia mentioned, I work for pg and &E. um, I've worked there for the last 25 years and I was so happy when they announced uh, a year or two ago that they were moving out of their headquarters in San Francisco and the way they announced it is that pg and is moving to Oakland and I've been, um, been part of uh, a small team that's trying to get the company excited about the move to Oakland and also clarify that we are not moving to Oakland, we're moving back to Oakland. So many of you may remember 1425 Clay Street. pg and &E had a, an office there from the 1920s until 1970, ostensibly, uh, to run the electric operations of pg and &E. and it wasn't until pg and &E completed its uh, 77 field headquarters in 1970 that they closed down 1425 Clay Street and moved to San Francisco. Um, so anyway, I, what I want to say here is um, express my appreciation for Oakland Heritage Alliance because this past year I have been trying to um, share with my 21,000 coworkers uh, and the and the three to four thousand who are moving to Oakland. Um, that they are not just moving into another building. They're moving into a building with a rich heritage and legacy, um, started by you know, Henry J. Kaiser. Um, and I've been um, soaking up so much information from experts here at Oakland Heritage Alliance who helped me share that story. Um, so I was more than happy uh, working with um, a couple of folks on the board to start a fundraising campaign for them. Um, and I'm happy to say that the, in this past year, this campaign raised over $10,000 for Oakland Heritage Alliance, and we will continue um, to keep this campaign going. Um, so I thank all of you who have donated to Oakland Heritage Alliance um, this past year. It is, I, I, I think by your presence here today, it's an important um, organization uh, that advocates for Oakland and its rich architectural heritage, um, and I, I'm, I'm with you in terms of supporting this going forward. So, uh, thank you so much. And Kevin, would you be so kind as to help us pass out these certificates to our award winners? downtown around City Hall, the suffrage centennial march, the displays in the City Hall foyer, the, what else, my gosh, the tours, <laughs> where, do you, where are we in? The plaques for Jack London Tree. Well, we, we thought our board member, Catherine Hughes, who has a special tribute here, uh, a commentary that she will read for us to commemorate her long friendship with Annalise. So where's Kitty? Right here. Yeah, the glare. Here she comes. Let's give Kitty a big hand. Stanford House. Uh, we were both working there. I was um, 
working on a history project about Oakland. And she was, I believe, the president of OHA at that time. She was very active in OHA. And um, we became mothers together and kind of watched our kids grow up together. And I watched her just reinvent herself over and over again. It seemed to me like she could be a columnist for the paper and uh, then turn her attention towards leading all kinds of tours, tours of churches. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Tours of churches. Um, tours of downtown, she, as um, Amelia mentioned, she, she kind of had her finger in everything. Um, and she was always so upbeat that she would often approach the board with some special project that she wanted and she would keep at it. She was very determined and uh, resolute when, when Ellie set her mind to something. So um, she made a lot of things happen. I see someone nodding her head over that. <laughs> um, and um, I don't know, I, I think she's memorable for so many things. Um, I remember seeing her as such an active presence at City Hall. She was in the marketing division with it of marketing, a tourist with other marketing, and I think she, more than anyone, um, helped really market the best things about Oakland to the world. Her columns were always upbeat. She really didn't want to dwell on all the negative stuff because you get enough of that in the news and everywhere else. So she really focused on what makes our city special. And I think we all owe her a debt of gratitude for that. Thank you. some more shout outs here to, uh, <laughs> to shout out. Uh -oh. I wanted to thank our administration and outreach director, Laura Amin, who is, uh, has been absolutely wonderful with helping us organize this event. And we've got a couple of elected officials with us today. We have got council member Dan Powell from that uh, North Oakland district, there he is. That one's not running for election, I don't think, this time around, but, but uh, Council Member Xing Tao is, and she will be hearing more about uh, her contributions a little bit. So next we have uh, two very important ladies who I would say are among the cornerstones of our civilization here in Oakland, our librarians. Where are we now? It's a Natalie Allen is a hard act to follow, but we've got Kathleen DiGiovanni, who is such a modest person that we had to really lean on her to accept an award. She is now going to make her own remarks about her views of Oakland Heritage Alliance and things she does for it, the tours and all that. And before we do that, people have been on one of Kathleen's tours? Raise your hand. Yeah. So let's do an applause meter. How many people like Montclair Village Tour the best? Okay. okay. How many people like Brooklyn Township? How many people like Lakeside Park? How many people like Fernwood? Oh boy, I'm not hearing a consensus here. I think she's going to have to keep doing them all. Kathleen, please come up here before I really embarrass you. Give a big hand, folks. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, Amelia's right. She had to twist my arm fine. Um, well, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is incredibly gratifying to be acknowledged in this really lovely way by an organization whose mission I believe in so strongly and for doing things I like to do and would be doing any, anyway, you know, I, I research, research, research. Um, and the next thing I wanna say is that anything that I did working at the Oakland Public Library or work for Oakland Heritage Alliance 
is up on the shoulders of the really excellent mentors that I've had. First and foremost, Bill Sturm, but also Betty Marvin of the Oakland Cultural Heritage Survey. And also the, the divine company of all of my wonderful colleagues and co-conspirators in the local history field. So Dorothy and Emily and Debbie and Ron and Steve and Dennis, we're all here and I'm gonna, Annalie, and absolutely, of course, Annalie, with all of her marvelous enthusiasm and and my bake sale friends from the lake and all of the other people I've conspired with over, over the years. Um, and the last thing before Neil gets the hook out is a lifetime achievement. Well, well, yeah, um, but I plan to keep going. And um, there's, there's just so much that is there to learn and that is so fascinating and so engaging about Oakley that, you know, you know eventually y'all are gonna have to beg me to stop. So, um, so thank you again to, to everybody. Thanks a bunch. Okay, so we got another librarian here, a very busy librarian who's got a book coming out. And how many people have had the opportunity to study in the Oakland History Center of the main library? Yeah, there you go. So Dorothy Lizard, would you like to come up here and tell us about your activities and your new projects, where we can buy your book? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me go, yeah. Thank you, Oakland Heritage Alliance. I'm really uh, honored, honored, really, to accept this award and to have done enough work for you to think I was worthy of it. And so it means an incredible lot to me because I hold the organization in such high esteem. And for those of you who might not know my story, I came uh, to the Oakland History Room very reluctantly. Uh, Kathleen offered me a transfer up. I was hap working very happily in the art, music, history, and literature and well, recreation department. And can you hear me? No. What am I done? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I was working in the uh, art, music, history, and literature department of the main library very happily. And uh, Kathleen approached me and said, Can you? Uh, work in the history room temporarily and a dozen years later <laughs> uh, no but I was uh, actually quite uh, I would say nervous about it I uh, there was a staggering amount to learn I wasn't sure that I could that I could uh, really ingest all that there was to learn and so, uh, but then when I got there, uh, I didn't have a real appreciation of how important Oaklanders and East Bay people see the history of this city and uh, how varied they are in their interests, you know, sports history, political history, all kinds of things. And so that was a little dismay, the demand of the job, but also how public the job was. I really wasn't used to that. People want to interview me and and I was like, I don't want to be interviewed. I just want to do my job and go home and go to my garden. So, uh, but then I came to realize that, you know, I could do the job and I knew a lot of Oakland history. I actually grew up on the other side of that freeway from here. So I was always curious about this house. So this is also a full circle moment. Um, and so, yeah, I knew a lot about the history. I saw this freeway being built. I saw the Metcalf House move from the lake to 14th and Brush and uh, had grown up here since I was about 11 years old. And so it, it meant an enormous amount for me to work in the history room. It was a, a point of pride for me. 
And so uh, I want to thank the members of OHA. I want to thank them for not only uh, honoring me in this way, but also honor, uh, welcoming me to become a part of the OHA newsletter crew. And it's been delightful to contribute articles there. But when you are honoring me, you're really, I'm accepting the award, uh, but you're really honoring all the people that I work with. People like Debbie and Ron and Emily and, and Sean. I saw you over there, Sean Dickerson. Thank you for your support. Kathleen, of course, uh, Aaliyah Shelton, Kate Kahn. I want to say their names because they were really integral. And also, uh, so many volunteers who came in unsolicited many times to help do things that it would have taken me many, many months to do. Uh, Jean Langmuir, I also want to say a, a big thank you to her. I don't know if she's here today. So, um, in 2019, uh, on a suggestion of the late Jeff Norman, I renamed the Oakland History Room, uh, the Oakland History Center, to reflect the depth and breadth of the collections and the services that we provided. And uh, to say something about that kind of symbiotic relationship that we have with our Oakland community. Um, so my aim is to prepare and has been to prepare the Oakland History Center to move into the future uh, with uh, Aaron and Emily, Aaron Saunders and Emily um, working to advance um, our work there. I also want to thank my sister who first taught me how thrilling history can be and my husband over there, uh, Gerald, who's heard all my stories about my various experiences at the History Center and uh, he feeds me with a lot of great memories of us growing up in Oakland. So thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Dorothy, this award cycle, we have had many wonderful individuals to recognize and some wonderful stewardship projects to recognize. But when we were having the preliminary meetings, the board members said, well, what about the house? Uh, uh, Amelia, can I tell us a little bit about it? Bradley has the transmitter at the bottom of your hand up. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, our board members wanted to be sure that we recognized some historic house restorations, and we've got a couple of them here today. Before we talk about the particulars, I'd like to also give a shout out to our wonderful hosts, the Pardee Family Home Museum. We've got just um, Rich Rochelle. Michelle Lieberman, who has just been wonderful coordinating with us, and Paul Silberman as well, and uh, his lovely wife, Karen. So thanks to you, and also a shout out to our board member, Allison Finley, past president Allison Finley, who everybody loves, who does so much for Open Heritage Alliance. So let's talk about our house restorations. 6024 Margarito. And what neighborhood is that in, Oaklanders? Upper Rock Ridge, yeah, yeah. So Jerry Holen is the architect who worked with the owner, John Lewis, who is a well-known conservator of art. And Jerry Holen has uh, redesigned this mid-century ranch-style house to make it very special and modern and add an ADU and all sorts of green features. So Jerry, are you here today? There she is, wanna come up and talk? All right, Jerry Holman, AIA. Can everybody hear me? Um, first off, I wanted to say thank you very much to um, OHA for recognizing such a humble home. Um, and also, uh, John Lewis was supposed to speak uh, this afternoon, 
and I just found out about half an hour ago that he wasn't going to be able to make it, and then I get to talk. <laughs> so I don't really have much to say. I just hope you enjoy the slides. I'm not sure what slides they've used, but the home is really kind of a, um, a, a combination of art and architecture. Of course, it's full of John Lewis's custom-made glass components. There's glass countertops, there's glass light fixtures, there's glass furniture. If it could be made in, out of anything cast, John did it. It took a very long time to get this, uh, these, these um, pieces of art in, integrated into the home. But the home itself was a 1936 ranch home, very humble, and you wouldn't have looked twice at it had you seen it before we remodeled it. But these homes, these ran ranch homes are ubiquitous in California. They started with the Mission Adobes, we see them in the Monterey Ranchos, and then we see them research, um, reemerge in the 1930s with Cliff May and his followers, and then of course in the Eichler in the, you know, the 50s and the 60s. So they're very much an integral part of California life. And this particular one, I'm not sure there's very many left. It was built during the Depression. It was very simple, but it had the hallmarks. It had the, the low pitch growth. It had the, the stucco adobe walls. It had the iron windows. And John needed it modernized. He needed kitchens and bathrooms. He needed a new staircase. There was $35,000 worth of termite report, so just carrying down the stairs uh, saved us a lot of money. Um, and then he needed an elevator, and then he had these gorgeous views of the, of the, um, of the bay, the home. The southern, the southern, it's very Frank Lloyd Wrighty and then plan the southern part faces south, the central part faces west, overlooking the Bay Bridge, the northern part um, faces north. And it was very much a rambling ranch as it hugged the hillside. And we basically kept the ranch style. That was my, my big contribution. My goal was to keep the ranch style, um, but make it a more modern ranch home. So we have full scale um, walls, uh, floor to ceiling uh, windows, kept the low pitch beam ceiling, and kept the adobe uh, texture. And now I think we have a 21st century ranch, but it's still a ranch and you can still see that. And if you ever get a chance to drive by in that neighborhood, do drive by it because the lake fixtures are absolutely wonderful. So thank you very much, especially to John himself for persevering. It was a very, very long project, uh, thanks to the city of Oakland and all their onerous uh, building um, processes. <laughs> and um, thank you again to OHA for recognizing the work that went into this home. Jerry, all right. So our next house restoration is off Piedmont Avenue, 3772-3774 Layton Street. And Allison Kiplinger is the proud owner of an authentic McGregor. And she has done an amazing job restoring it. Once again, in the barn, uh, the carriage house rather, the historic carriage house, the PowerPoint is looping around and you can see pictures of all of the projects and stewardship organizations that we are recognizing today and great individuals. So Allison, where are you? There you are, wanna come up and tell us a little bit about it? You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> Say uh, hi to all my buddies here from the First Unitarian Church a couple blocks away. Well, I wasn't expecting to say anything, but what the heck? Um, a thousand people really were involved in the project. Maybe not a thousand, maybe a hundred, but a lot. A lot of people over many years, and of course, all the people who. Um, kept the house going for the 116 years. I've only been involved in it for about 30, but there were many people, many generations before I arrived that loved the house. Um, Layton Street is a wonderful street, and if anyone wants to come and see the house, I would love to show it to you. So maybe be in touch with OHA, love to give you a little tour. It's, um, it's really a modest one and a half story house, three bedrooms upstairs originally with a front hall and parlor, um, dining room and kitchen with the first small little addition, the sunroom kind of off the back. 
you know, um, lots of people were involved, and uh, thank you for this honor. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Alice. Okay, now we get into some stewardship projects. How many people have been up to see the Woodminster Cascade recently? All right, well, we have with us today a guy who is a dynamo when it comes to organizing efforts in Joaquin Miller Park. Fire prevention, removal of invasive uh, plants that constitute fire fuel for wildland fires, and he pretty much single-handedly spearheaded the restoration of the Woodminster Cascade. It was, of course, conceived of by Juanita Miller herself. She envisioned it, and it was built by the WPA. It was designed by William Penn Mott, right? He was uh, earlier in his career as the superintendent of the park department in Oakland. And so it's just a jewel, and of course, after 80 years, there were some leaky pipes and some algae, and Dale was the guy who spearheaded it, along with his lovely husband, Patrick Loshivo. You will recognize them as past winners of PIP awards for the restoration of Joaquin Miller's Abbey there. And so, gentlemen, you got together with council member Shane Tao and her able legislative director, Brandon Harami, with Craig Pond, a project manager for Public Works and Capital Projects, and you guys got the job done. You got the funds allocated, the city did the work, and now it's in good enough shape that people are having weddings there. And Dale also has mentored children. He has uh, provided the opportunity for preschoolers to have their own garden plots there by the Cascade Reflecting Pools. So Dale, come on up here and say a few words for us. Well, I hope you all do come up to, can you hear me? Nope. Better now? Yeah. Well, I hope you all come up to the Cascade. We're about that close to having it all totally done. Um, it was a 1937 WPA project done for artists so that artists can, uh, you know, had have, have employment. And I wanted to tell a little bit about some of the people that really helped it. Brandon Harami, who is just loved by just the poor. Uh, we've never had somebody so positive, so nice to work with, we can't thank them. And then I had the pleasure one day to take Sheng Tao on a walk in uh, Rocky Miller Park. She was limping very badly. She had had leg problems. But she took an hour to walk through the park to, with me. And what I loved about her was she had vision. And she could see that if we improved this facility, we'd bring more people to the park. I think everybody should be very happy. Walking in Miller Park has quadrupled in the number of people that come and since the pandemic. And the nice thing is we've been taking surveys and that population is not dropping off. And now it really, when you go into the park, it's like going to a truly Oakland park. And I think we can all be uh, happy about that. And then I wanted to thank also Craig Kahn I was there the other day, and someone was about to have a wedding, and they contacted Greg to find out if the water feature was going. He spent all day working to get that operating for that couple, so they would have a wonderful wedding day. And that's the kind of city workers, you know, we're very fortunate to have. Um, I partner a lot with uh, Oakland Public Works, and. Uh, on the whole, I find them tremendously helpful. They want to see things improve. Um, I'll mention really quickly that we are trying to do a lot of fire prevention in Joaquin Little Park. We're uh, busy trying to remove uh, uh, feathery acacia. And feathery acacia kind of grows like a lawn. It's like here, 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 here. And it moves across. And uh, with people like uh, 
the old screwer down here, we've been able to remove 53 40 cubic yard uh, dumpsters. So uh, already alone, the Wood Minister neighborhood, we're going to move on, but the Wood Minister neighborhood is pretty safe now from fire for walking to work on. So I just wanted to thank all those people. Thank you. to Sheng Tao, to Brandon, and to, to Craig. Did I miss anyone? Yeah, there have been a lot of volunteers. And Joel, let's not forget Joel, who is there working on uh, removing invasives. Okay. Wow, this is also exciting. So how many people are familiar with the church at the corner of 17th and Franklin? It's a real landmark, is it? Well, it's now occupied by the Resurrection Church. It was originally the first Church of Christ Scientist. It's gone through some changes, changes of ownership. But now it is being really fixed up. And the congregation there has had the great good fortune of engaging a a glass conservator who is one of our other award winners. She has won other awards as well. Her name is Ariana Mako, and she is a graduate, a master's degree holder from the Royal College of Art in London. So Ariana has done an amazing job. Uh, she was one of our lecturers and her recorded video lecture is available on the Oakland Heritage Alliance website. I would encourage you to see it. It's mind-boggling the precision and detail that these art conservators working under her um, mentorship have done with this beautiful work. This beautiful 10-foot, is it? Uh, stained glass dome. So Ariana, would you like to come up and uh, tell us a little bit about that? Give our hand again. Well, I'm trying to <laughs> find, find a sweet spot where I can talk to you and not be Um, Thank you so much for this honor. Uh, I have been in conservation for about 30 years. Zilani Goss Conservation is based in Oakland. We will be celebrating our 20th anniversary working um, in January, so I'm very proud of that. Um, and we've worked on various monumental projects, including Grace Cathedral. And this project was the first historic large monumental project that we did in Oakland. And I was just so excited to have my team, mostly Oaklanders, our studios in Oakland, and we got to work on this amazing historic um, inverted stained glass dome. Um, and as was mentioned, um, there's a video about all the different steps it took, um, so I won't talk about the specifics, but I would encourage you to take a moment and look around at your neighbors and applaud each other for being excited and passionate about historic Oakland. Do it now. Applaud each other. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to step it up a bit. Look again at your neighbors. Look at what those people look like. I just turned 51. Think about what their ages are and think about who is going to be taking care of Oakland when we retire, when we, I don't know, grow out of back. I'm, I'm still climbing scaffolding, but a little bit slower than I did 20, 30 years ago. And one of the things I'm really, really passionate about is bringing in the next generation of Oaklanders to preserve what we've got. And part of that also is thinking about health and safety because we deal with lead and asbestos and glass. So if people are specifically curious about that, I will talk about it for hours and hours, but I know I've got about five minutes. Um, but 
that's the thing that I really would love for you to take away. Go visit the church. It's amazing. Res Oak is really welcoming. They really want to be part of the community. I want to be part of the community. So let's expand our community to help preserve Oakland now and for the future. Thank you. Exciting, yeah. So, how many people love the Lake Merritt monster? Yeah. It was looking pretty dilapidated there for a while, but we've got some movers and shakers from the Lake Merritt Breakfast Club and the Monster Fan Club, and we've got Peter Burkholtz from uh, uh, late of the Landmarks Preservation Advisory Board, who does pro bono work all over town, and he did that for the Lake Merritt Monster. It's now in great shape, and we would very much like to have Kyle and Susan tell us a little bit about that project. Let's give them a hand. I think we're gonna um, introduce Peter. Are, Peter, are you gonna? Okay, okay. So mostly we just really quickly got to do some thank yous. Um, I'd like to thank William Penn Mott Jr. for um, <laughs> approaching an artist called Bob Winston. And then I'd like to thank Kathleen D. Giovanni for writing the article, The Monster Needs a Bake Sale. And I'd like to especially thank her for using the term bake sale because that got Susan involved with the fan club, and Susan said, cool, I'm a baker. And then from there, just the, the thank yous need to go out to each and every last person sitting out there, because the Oakland Heritage Alliance and people like Betty Marvin just led a couple, this was super grass, oh, um, are you gonna thank the Lake Bird Breakfast Club, or is that part of it? Okay. Thank you, to, shout out to the Lake Merritt Breakfast Club and, and the funders. And um, yeah, just um, because uh, we read an article from Kathleen, we saw that there were little holes in the thing and we thought, how difficult can it be? And then, you know, we found out, okay, it can be difficult, but in a sense that was kind of great because that brought in, you know, that casket and, and Peter got involved we got to meet all of you all who um, can, and so I just have to, you know, like there's Kathleen, I have to say, you know, what we're, what I'm asking right now, and just look around, look at all the folks here, what's the next bake sale? So I'd like to say thank you to everybody here, and thank you, Oakland, for providing numerous bake sales. Kyle, before you step down, could you um, unveil? Um, they are selling t-shirts and the, the, the money goes to support the ongoing maintenance of Lake Merritt and the... It goes directly to the Lake Merritt Breakfast Club The breakfast. It goes to the Breakfast yeah. Club, which whose mission is Lake Merritt, essentially. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah and then Kathleen, I want to say thank you as well, because I was on the landmark board with them. I see fellow board member Chris Andrews out there. Um, um, where I first heard about this, it was you coming before the landmark board that then put me in contact with the uh, Breakfast Club and others, so thank you. And Jerry, you were mentioning your project and how hard it was to work with the building department. This was a great project. It was so easy to work with the building department. We didn't get a permit. Uh, oddly, kind of in retrospect. Um, but we did work with the Department of Public Works and the Breakfast Club obviously was the financial backer of this. We gotta give them a big thanks, but. Hi, and uh, Thank you. Hello. Oh. Hello, um, thank you both for um, Susan and Kyle for your, your you really gave it the momentum to uh, make it happen. Uh, my office did provide the sort of technical expertise and Western Specialties Contractors was the actual people that did it. And it turned out most of what I did, most of what, what I did was um, negotiate. Uh, I'm not doing anything different, the, the contract, but um, Anyway, thanks to all of you. It's great to um, be able to um, have restored that. And I would like to propose that if anybody wants to talk about landmarking it, I think the um, Monster for its association, again, with William Penn Mott, 
and Bob Winston, the uh, CCA designer, uh, as well as the association with um, Creative Playthings and uh, Noguchi, etc., is worthy of becoming one of the other uh, landmark along Lake Merritt. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. We all greatly appreciate your civic engagement in fixing up that wonderful monster. And I totally shouldn't have ratted Peter out about the pro bono work, should I? <laughs> no, that's my little name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, for the grand finale here, one of the most important features of our local heritage is our faith communities. And we are so overjoyed to be able to recognize the very first African-American church in Oakland, the Allen Temple Baptist Church. So we've got some folks here from the congregation, and uh, we've got Pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline A. Thompson. We've got church historian, Martha Taylor, and we've got some other good folks. Would one of you like to come up and tell us a little bit about your mission and the uh, 103 years that you've been serving Oakland? Takers, there we go. Behind you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am Reverend Dr. Jacqueline A. Thompson. I am blessed to serve as the senior pastor of Allen Temple Baptist Church. I am the first woman to be elected in our 103 year history. And certainly on behalf of our entire congregation and all of our leadership, we are so very honored to be recognized in this way. This year makes 103 years that we have been a faith community. 90 of those years have been in East Oakland. So in the year that we were founded, 1919, there were about 5,400 African Americans that were in the city of Oakland and they congregated mostly in West Oakland. But 12 brave souls ventured out to what we know as East Oakland and on the corner of what we call Seminary in East 14th with 12 borrowed chairs, they formed this faith community. And in that formation, they worked to transform the lives of people who lived in East Oakland through education, through awareness, through community development, through activism. We went from one small, tiny building on the corner of 86 and International to now most of that entire block and campus, plus housing for seniors, plus housing for those living with HIV and AIDS, and a host of other programs that I am not allotted the time to share with you. But we certainly wanted to make sure that we came, that we expressed our deep appreciation that you would choose to honor us in this year of celebration. And I certainly want to ask all of those who are here from Allen Temple, I thank you so much. Please stand so they can see you. Long time members of of the church and members of our trustee board who is responsible for maintaining our buildings and grounds. And so again, it is our privilege and it is our hope that we will be with you a long time to come. And as for me, I am a native of Oakland. I was born and raised in East Oakland, raised on Havens Court. And so I have seen the transformation of the city throughout the years. And I certainly just want to admonish each of us, we have a good thing here. We are challenged in many ways, but we have a good thing here. And it is my hope that each of us in our own way, whether we are natives here, whether we are transplants from other places, that we will make it our mission to do what we can to preserve everything that makes us unique and diverse as Oakland. And so I thank you, Ms. Marshall. I believe you're Amelia Marshall, if I have it right. We thank you so much for this distinct honor and thank you for the opportunity to be able to greet you and to share. honor to be able to recognize uh, Temple Baptist Church. Well, folks, we have managed to get this program together. We are under schedule and under budget, and we're ahead of schedule. We've got drink, we've got food, we've got cords that you might trip on if you don't watch your step. We've got um, Restroom up here, uh, there's an ADA restroom as well, accessible by a lift. So I would urge you to take advantage of our remaining hours of sunlight here by uh, partaking of some of these wonderful items that Allison Finley and P. 
Piedmont Grocery and Rochelle Lieberman have provided. My husband will to tell you all about the wines he's brought. So uh, with that, thank you very much for coming to the Partners in Preservation event and have a great evening.